So we've got one more thing that I want to cover. And um, like I said, and it's not a negative at all. I think we spent a lot of great time really exploring these, especially if you're a beginner. But we actually were slightly slower than usual. So that's why we do have to go all the way till the 930 mark, more like most likely. Um, so here's the last thing that I want to happen. On the About screen, I want to be able to click on that Customize button, and it pops up and it asks, what's your name? It's then going to take that name and display it on screen. So that sounds like, well, that's a lot. Are we going to be able to cover it? Yes, uh, because we have a lot of the knowledge already to make that work. Um, so this is going to be JavaScript. That means we need to, in Notepad, we need to open our JavaScript, our Kodika dot JavaScript file. So let's go to our project folder and open the kodika.ext.js file, the JavaScript file. Go ahead and open that. And so I guess we'll start on line two. We're going to create a function. We've seen how to do that before, so we write the keyword function. We can make up any name we want, so we're going to call this get name. So we're going to create a function called get name, which will get the person's name. The syntax of creating a function is you use that keyword, you make up a name, and then you've got the open and close parentheses, space, curly brace, close the curly brace. That's the syntax that we've always seen before. So we're going to create our brand new method, get name, our own function. We've invented this. It doesn't exist. And what I want to do is when I click the button, customize, I want this to run. I want to access this, this, uh, this function. Well, before we get it too complex, let's just make an alert here. That's one of the fastest ways. We can do console output also, but I just want to be obvious. Alert. Clicked on customize. This will show me very obviously that I clicked on the button because I'm going to get a pop-up. If that works, then I can proceed. Well, right now that button doesn't know that you need to click it and run this function. And the quick and easy way to make it work is like what we had with dir, which was on click. We could say on click get name, but we don't want to go that route because that's the older way to do things. So we'll go the newer jQuery route. On the next line after the function, we'll write some jQuery that say, hey, button, pay attention. When you get clicked, run this function. That's going to be dollar sign, open close parentheses. Inside the parentheses, quotes. And here is we would re where we would reference either an ID or a class or just about anything on screen. We don't have an ID on that button yet, but this is the direction we're going. That button will have an ID, and then when we click on it, it'll run this function. I know that eventually I'm going to call this pound btn customize. I'm going to attach eventually an ID to the button on screen. ID equals btn customize. So this is basically JavaScript saying, hey, let's, hey, button, pay attention. At the end, we'll say dot on, open close parentheses, semicolon. On, we saw a little bit ago on the map. Uh, when something happens, do something. So here the button is paying attention, paying attention to a click, on click. So in the parentheses, we've got quotes, and we'll write click. When there's a click on that button, do the following. So after the click, comma, we're still in the we're still in the parentheses. Function 
open close parentheses, open close curly brace. Unfortunately, we cannot simply write this function, get name, right here. jQuery, when they were inventing jQuery, they never thought of that. You have to do it this way. We have to have just an anonymous function, open close curly braces, and then in the open co close curly braces we can call the function we really want. Space no, we're just putting the spaces for a little readability. Okay, so that is basically an event handler. There's an event that happens. Let's handle it. The event is that there's a click specifically on that button, which we have not named with the ID yet. When that gets clicked, then run this function, get name. And all, all of what get name simply does at the moment is a pop-up that very obtrusively says click on customize. So we need two things. Some sort of identifier on the element and how to handle working with the element. So we've got how to handle with working with the element. Now we need the identifier on the element, either a class or ID. In this case, an ID. So save this file. Let's go back to your index, line 248. Here's our button waiting, but this button doesn't know that it's being called upon until we give it the ID. And as, of, as we've been doing, we've been adding IDs at the end of the tag. So after data inline true, space, ID, equals btn customize. So now we've got a button that is paying attention, or that can be targeted, actually. We've got a button that can be targeted, and then that jQuery we just wrote makes it pay attention, and once it gets clicked it should run the function, and that function then does alert. Save all your files and run, run it, and let's see if that works. If it doesn't, make sure you've spelled button customize exactly the same on both files. It is case sensitive in this case. BTN capital C for customize. So that capital C on my ID and capital C on my jQuery. Raise your hand if it worked. Three people. Okay, good. Everyone else is asleep. Or it did not work. Let's check if mine worked. Perfect. Did that work for everyone? Anyone need a little help? All right, let me pull my code back up here and then we'll take a quick look. So based on what we've got here, we then wanted to do a little bit more than simply an alert. So we want to capture the name. Okay, so what I actually want this to do is to ask for the person's name. Uh, so let's comment out the alert. It served its purpose. And if you recall from a while ago, what we did was we had something to ask for the name, which was prompt. That will ask for a person's name. 
And inside of prompt, I can make it say something like, what's your name? So that text will appear on screen when you click the button. You can save it and run it, and you'll see that. You get the pop-up that asks for a name. We're not done yet because that is simply going to ask for the name, but it's not going to do anything with it. That's coming next. Let's see if that works. Prompt. What's your name? I can put in a name and nothing will happen. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to capture that name. And we've talked previously about variables. Variables are containers that you can hold stuff. But we've got uh, a new generation, so to speak, of variables, because variables actually, they're temporary. When you create and use variables in your project, and then you close your project and load it again, all your variables get reinitialized. Those variables, those containers get dumped and there's nothing there anymore. So variables are temporary. HTML5 has a feature where we can save permanent variables, quote unquote. You can also think of them as cookies. But these are better than cookies because they can save more data than cookies and they're more robust than cookies. So we're going to store this person's name in an object called a local storage object. Local storage is the HTML5 construct that lets us do this. So I'm just going to make a quick comment here. Local storage. Notice the capital S. You can sort of think about this as HTML5 cookies. But they're not limited. Um, a, a traditional cookie, I think, can only store like 25 kilobytes of data. This can store usually at minimum 5 megabytes. So that's like 10 times more data. This can store pictures. You can't store a picture in, in a cookie. Uh, so local storage. It's an HTML5 cookie, kind of. And so the way that it works is we use local storage and then we, we create a name because we can have many local storage objects like many variables. So we're going to enhance line 5. Before the beginning of prompt, we're going to write local storage dot. This is one of these inconsistencies that happens here and there. You just have to memorize. We've been seeing something dot something, and usually it was something and then it ends with uh, parentheses, right? This is one of the ones that doesn't end like this. It's local storage dot and then the name of our cookie name. So I'm going to call this username, space equals. We're using the local storage HTML5 object and creating a variable called username asking for the person's name and storing it in there. Remember, the equals means take what's on the right, put it what's in, on the left. So to see if this worked, let's do alert. Uh, to, to fill that variable, to fill that local storage cookie, it's this syntax the name of it equals something. To retrieve it, we just say the name of it. So local storage, we always have to do it this way, local storage dot username. And capital letters do matter. If I try to retrieve the username like that, that's not the right username. It is the right one like this. Save it and run it. What should happen is it pops up, asks you for your name, you type it in, click OK, and then on the next screen right away, you get a pop-up with your name. Because it stored your name in a more permanent variable, in a more permanent cookie, a local storage object named username. Obviously, we can name these things anything we want. High score, player one, player two, last visited, two days date. We can make these variables that are stored permanently because a regular old variable erases when you close the browser, when you close the app. These are permanent. Mike, 
Let's see if mine worked. It should say it when you click Customize. It'll ask your name. You click OK. And it should pop up again and say your name right there. So at this point, this should just show us that, okay, uh, we're able to ask for a name, we're able to store it and retrieve it. Well, I actually then want to use it. I want to put my name on screen in my app. And so I want to create a few placeholders in my app. Wherever these placeholders exist, I want to then display my name. So we've got the home screen, the art screen, the PC screen. I want my name to appear on all of those places. So let's go back to the index file. All the way back to line at the top, line 44. It says welcome. But I wanted to say welcome, Victor. Welcome, Johnny. I wanted to say the person's name right here. So we're going to add a little placeholder. I've mentioned before that divs are commonly used as placeholders. Um, they're, this, they're these invisible things that will then be replaced with some content. However, we'll talk about it later, but there's divs and their cousins spans, and span will actually work better here simply because a div will want to take up a line all by itself. If we added a div here, it would push welcome to its own line and have your name on a new line. Divs want to take up all the space they can. A span, though, will play fair and will stay next to whatever's already there. So we're going to add a span here. Our name will appear here right next to welcome. If we added a div, it would push welcome up here and my name down here. So a span, I think we used it briefly, but it's just like most tags that has a pair. We're not going to put anything between the span tags, it's a placeholder. But we do want to give it a class so that I can put my name in multiple places throughout my project. So I can reuse this placeholder, so to speak, several times. So that needs a class. If I gave it an ID, I can only do it once. So we'll add a class here. And we'll call that um, no, we'll call it uh, name MSG name message. We could call it, I suppose, username, but that'll confuse us because we've already got a username, maybe. So we'll call this class name MSG. So this placeholder should display the person's name after the app asks for it. We need a little more JavaScript, so make sure this is typed correctly. Span slash span class equals name message, capital N. Back to the JavaScript. We're going to say it asks for their name. Comment that up. Comment that alert also. We don't need that alert. That's just proof of concept. I'm going to write some jQuery right here. The same syntax as before. Quotes here. The name of the particular class or placeholder we're talking about. Since it's a class, it's dot name message. Saying, hey, name message, pay attention. We had on click before, line 10. Here we're, we've got a different method. Uh, this one is for an event handler to pay attention to do something, but we can then also change the contents of a placeholder. 
That's what we're going to do now. We're going to say .html. We're going to change the HTML that currently exists in that placeholder. And that's where we want to display our name, local storage dot username. Okay, this should be what we need. Go ahead and save all your files and let's run it and I'll show you how it should work. You should, it should ask you for the name, type it in, close that box, and when you go back to the home screen, your name should suddenly appear there. Hopefully. Let's see. So I'm going to click About, Customize, Victor, click OK. I need to close this about screen. Welcome, Victor. Space. What's that? You need, space. you need a space, exactly. It says, Welcome, Victor, no space. didn't quite work for you, we'll wait for the lab. But if it worked for you, okay, it worked, but not quite there yet. So we've, we've changed the HTML inside of that placeholder. There was nothing there, and we replaced it with the username. But we need spaces and other stuff, perhaps, such as maybe an apostrophe, uh, a comma. Welcome, comma, Victor. So we can then write here something a little better. We'll write quotes space plus. We've seen this before, I think, a little bit. We're going to write something and something else. That's what the plus basically is. We're going to write something and something else. We're going to write a comma and a space. So that'll have the word already there is welcome. It'll add a comma and a space, then my name. And then for fun, I can further say and also write an exclamation point. So welcome, comma, space, Victor, exclamation point. So if I refresh this and go to About, Customize, Victor, <coughs> click OK, Welcome, comma, Victor. I want my name to also appear on Art and PC. My JavaScript is functional, so what I would need is <coughs> Wherever I want my name to appear, just copy this whole span, that placeholder. That placeholder gets replaced anywhere that it exists because it's a class. It gets replaced with my name. So wherever I want my name to appear, just plug that in. So let's say we'll say on the art screen line 112 says, hello, art page 2. Well, I'm going to make it say, learn art. Placeholder. On line 12, 112, learn art. Placeholder, which gets replaced with the person's name.
And then I have to find uh, my section uh, for PC. I have to find where I've got the, the placeholder text for PC and write something witty there also. Learn PCs. Placeholder. Let's see what line is that. Uh, 171. Take PC classes. Placeholder. So now there's three places there that my name will appear, and I can have as many places as I want. I'm using that same span class name message placeholder to be replaced with whatever person's name is typed into the box. So if I save it and run it, and I go to About, Customize, John, Welcome, John. Learn art, John. Take PC classes, John. So a little faster than I wanted to talk about it, but that was local storage. We can look that up. If you look up HTML5 local storage, you'll get plenty of instructions in the manual and tutorials how exactly it works. Pretty straightforward. We create a local storage variable this way, equals to something, and we retrieve it by just naming it. And we did this trick that we then displayed anywhere there's name message span. <laughs> It just does it. The very, very last thing we'll do is, well, I said that these variables, these local storage objects, are permanent, but did you notice that when you refresh, the name goes away? Even though I said they're, they're permanent, it went away. Well, the name, the text, the data inside those variables still exists, but there's no mechanism to to make them exist, to show them on screen, because when we reload the HTML file, it reads all the code from top to bottom, and it hasn't gotten to the part where it asks you for the name to display it. The part that actually display it is, displays it is right here on the JavaScript, but it doesn't do it, because we never ran get name again. So we'll write a little bit more JavaScript so that it automatically puts the name when you load the page. Line 10. We're going to create a function called load name. Load the name. If we've got a name, display it. Well, what are the two possibilities? We have a name or we don't have a name. What if a person visits the page for the very first time? They've never given their name. But if they visited it subsequent times, they've given a name. So we have two possibilities. Either there's a name or there's no name. So that's perfect for making a decision. There's the if JavaScript code. If there's a name, display it. If there's no name, don't display it. So if, open close parentheses, curly brace, else, open curly brace, close curly brace. That's if something is true, do what's in here. If something then is not true, do what's in here. Making decisions here. <clears throat> the very first time that we, uh, we, we access the page, local storage is not defined, the local storage username is not defined, it, it, we've never written anything into it, it's, there's no definition, there's nothing in that variable. So we're going to check it this way. If there's no variable 
then don't display the name. If there is a variable, then display it. So we need to check local storage dot username equals equals two equals symbols right there. No spaces between the equals. Two equals. Undefined. So the possibility could be there's no name saved. That's what that's saying. Check, is there no name saved? If there's no name saved, nothing's going to happen. Don't display anything. There's nothing to display. So we don't, have, we don't have to write anything in this if, but I'm just going to write a comment. No name. Do nothing. No name has been saved. Don't do anything. Don't try to display a name that doesn't exist. But if there is a name, then that's the else part. And I'm just going to copy and paste line 7. If there is a name, then I want to display that on screen. So if there's no name, do nothing. If there is, or else there must be a name. There has to be a name or there's no name. Two possibilities here in this case. The possibility that there is a name, then display it. Because this is a function, it doesn't it doesn't automatically run unless it's called. Something has to trigger it. Something has to call it, activate it. So we want when the page loads up, check is there a name? And if there is, display it. So we need to call this function on the index file at the very end. After everything happens, after we've loaded the HTML, after we've loaded the placeholder, after we've got everything ready to go, then at the very end, right before body, the end of body, we need to run a JavaScript load name. We're going to say one final bit of JavaScript after everything loads up and renders and everything works, then check, do we have a name? If we do, display it on screen. If we don't, don't worry about it. Don't display anything. Save it and run it. The very last name that you wrote should automatically appear. You don't have to go back to add a new name. It's been saved. We just, we just weren't retrieving it. Now with load name, we're checking if it exists to show it. And then here, of course, make sure you've written load name with your capital letter, if you wrote with a capital letter, and semicolon to finish the command. This is a new script. Don't put this inside of the script that already exists for Codica. That does not work. You want a brand new script pair and then your one JavaScript command. Welcome, John. So as we wrap up here on the last day, well, we did cover a lot in one day. Usually we spend about one day and a half or so, but I think we did really well spending the time that we spent on the previous days, especially for beginners. We spent a whole day on HTML, a whole day on CSS, a whole day on JavaScript. Some days I kind of, I mean some semesters I kind of smushed those together a bit more, but I think since we had more beginners than, than not, I think it was a good idea to talk about the basics for a bit, and then we did the, the stuff and built it up to this point, and now we've got this fully functional web app. Um, fully functional, not complete of course, it doesn't have a lot of the content, but we'll, we'll get through that through our months of the class. But as we wrap up the, the course, you know, look, think about where you started, especially if you were a beginner, how far you've come with the jQuery mobile framework as a as a good guide, and we still have plenty to go and plenty to learn. I would say during our 
during our inter session, which is just the weekend, right? Uh, log on to jQuery Mobile, poke around in there, read up on it a little bit. Um, look at this website over here that I like. It's called html5rocks.com. That's a place where you can look up HTML5 stuff, where you can look up that local storage stuff that we kind of glossed over, but um, html5rocks.com, and there's plenty of other places to learn. But we got local storage to work. It's a modern HTML5 concept, and we can use it to store basic data, very, very basic database information, very basic. When we make our project more advanced, we'll be able to use much more, much better databases later on to store more complex data. But at the very least, local storage lets us save some basic information permanently, better than a variable for some, to some degree, better than cookies, definitely better than cookies. And we wrote some more JavaScript to ask for that, and that was relatively easy. We just used prompt, which is built in. We stored it, displayed it on screen with some jQuery tricks, did a little if-else to check does the name exist or not. We'll do more if-else as time goes on. And we did a bunch of other things. So I'm going to put my work in the network folder, and uh, that'll be the end of part one. When we come back next week, it'll be part two. We need to re-enroll. We know the procedure. And then we'll start to talk about, we've got this project. Let's upgrade it to be an actual app. That's when, if you've got a device, that would be great for you to start to bring. You, won't, you probably won't need it until day two, Thursday. But you, if you have a device, bring it. Don't forget to bring the cable, too. If you don't have a device, we can use virtual devices. But uh, again, pat yourself on the back. If you're a beginner, look how far you've come. And we'll keep learning next time.